Now they can certainly expropriate your water. This is no laughing matter. This is exactly what it is meant to be. The expropriation of minority rights in South Africa without compensation through water licenses. Simple as that. The ANC hates white people. No need to sugarcoat it. The ANC absolutely hates white people people we have quotas for water licenses the more blacks you have in management the more water you get as a farmer or as a factory owner what other conclusion is there other than to say the ANC hates white people yes i would completely agree with this we've often argued that the ANC is not interested in minority groups they are only interested in what you could describe as the blacks right well according to the latest legislation I'm afraid to say the ANC is given the ghost up, mate. According to the current regulations that are coming out around water usage, it says preference must be given to the blacks. That's the actual regulations, ladies and gentlemen. No one else. No Indians. No coloreds. No Chinese. No whites. No Native Americans. To the blacks. Basically, water was nationalized a decade or two ago. You needed a water license to use water over a certain amount per month, depending on land size. And those water licenses are very much like mining licenses. They're very difficult to obtain, very arduous, huge processes to follow. And they are the lifeblood, literally, of thousands of commercial farms and factories and mines across this country. What the ANC has done is taken that leverage where they nationalize the water and now they're going to say you can't have any water until you be compliant depending on size and volume of water needed up to 75% of your company needs to be literally in the words of the regulations black. What is that going to do to agriculture? What is that going to do to mining? What is that going to do to manufacturing? I mean this is the expropriation of business at a scale that we have never seen before interesting that the language that was used because the language usually will sugarcoat it and try and make it seem like it's non-racial language they try and make it seem like they're actually interested in more ethnicities than they are these regulations though are very telling because they just say we're only interested in giving preference to the blacks obviously we're not apartheid sympathizers but i am reminded of something that pw Boto once said and that is he says to the outside world the ANC claims to hate apartheid because of the violence it perpetuates on people. He says, but inwardly, the ANC are just envious because they want apartheid. They just want it under different management. And this shows that P.W. Boto was, I'm afraid to say, my friend, very, very accurate. And he was very truthful when he said that. Because what we are seeing is we are seeing a degree of race preferential treatment being given to a specific categorization of individuals within the state. It is very easy to see the parallels between ANC ideology in relation to BEE and the type of thing that the Nats would say. This would fit in perfectly in a Nats framework. All you have to do is change black with white and you've got Nats policy, my friend. Indeed, no, very much so. This is the sort of the conclusion of the National Democratic Revolution. And the reason why it's happening under Sir Ramaphosa, if you take it into context with the Amendment Bill, with the NHI, with EWC and all that sort of stuff, is that Cyril is the perfect vessel for pure ANC ideology, which is literally based on white hatred and is literally based on being the vanguard of black Africans. Cyril is the person who is just another ANC cater, the perfect ANC cater, the cater that doesn't care about any consequences whatsoever as long as he follows through with the line of the ANC. He's a reformer in terms of making sure the ANC is ideologically more pure than ever before. Yes, we've argued many times on this show that Ramaphosa is the most communist cater in the ANC. The great non-political, you can't buy me type person is the most bought and is the most captured. The ANC are trying to reverse apartheid. It is obvious through the legislative framework that they have. And why this becomes problematic is that during the apartheid era, the rest of the world looked at what the Nats were doing. They criticized them. Civil society, 
companies, let us not forget, Pepsi left South Africa because of apartheid. They said, we don't want to be involved in this, right? We are not seeing that underneath the new apartheid. We are seeing corporate South Africa bend a knee in sovereignty. We're seeing this from NGOs such as AgriSA who say, well, if only we just give them a give them a hand, they won't take their whole arm. And we all know the saying, they very well will. Not only will they take the whole arm, they'll take your upper body, probably a bit of your head, right? I must say, Ramon, for once in my life, I'm not laughing. No, I'm definitely not laughing. A lot of people might be thinking, okay, this is like the ANC, RET faction trying to outflank Cyril or something like that. The Minister of Water is Mchunu. Mchunu is Cyril's big buddy. Cyril wanted him to be Secretary General in place of Ace Mahashule, which failed at that conference. And he also has been with Cyril lock and step ever since Cyril came into office. He is one of Cyril's biggest confidants, biggest supporters, and most importantly, a very trusted ally of Cyril Ramaphosa. This is not coming from any other camp of the ANC other than the Cyril camp. If people can understand that, people can finally realize that this is the pure ANC coming in its purest form. This is the National Democratic Revolution writ large. NDR 2.0 is right here, and their goal is to deprive minorities of their rights. Now they can certainly expropriate your water. This is no laughing matter. This is exactly what it is meant to be. The expropriation of minority rights in South Africa without compensation through water licenses. Simple as that. This hasn't been passed yet, ladies and gentlemen. There is still time to fight back against this. And no doubt there are various points of civil society that will fight the legislative change. But it's important to understand that this draft reg legislation lays bare the ideology of the ANC. The ANC is inherently racist, it hates minorities, and it hates you. And for AgriSA, who says, oh, they're against this, but they approve of the general message about restorative justice in the agricultural sector, you, AgriSA, are the reason why the ANC gets away with everything. We talk about opposition politics a lot, but what about opposition institutions? AgriSA is there to protect farmers. AgriSA is there to protect agriculture. By agreeing with the ANC in principle, but disagreeing with the method, is basically not being any opposition whatsoever. You should put up a war chest of millions of rands, tell the ANC to their face, we'll fight you tooth and nail to not allow this to pass. And if it does pass, we're going to fund things in the UN, we're going to fund things in America, we're going to fund things everywhere to make sure the world understands that Apartheid 2.0 is right here. And it's not just affecting one minority group, it's affecting a variety of minority groups who aren't black. I agree to say, if you need advice, hook us up, I'll be glad to give it to you. But this tiptoeing between wanting restorative justice in agriculture and sort of agreeing with the ANC but not agreeing with the methods, you are pathetic. You let yourself down, you let your members down, and you let South Africa down. So agree say, grow a pair of fucking balls and do something for the members that fund you.